Hello, in this video I will show you how to use images from SDL2. By the end of this lesson you should be able to load an image file and use it in your game. We'll start by downloading the SDL2 image library. You should also bookmark the documentation page in case you need more help with a particular function. Now, we'll basically repeat the installation steps we did when we've initially installed SDL2. We need to copy or move the files from include, lib and bin to their correspondence in our minw folder. We'll start with the code from our SDL2 create a window tutorial. As usual, I will make the final code available in the video description. As with any C library that you add to a project, we start with including the header file, SDL image in this case. Like SDL2, SDL image has an init function, img init specifies what kind of images we'll use in our code. When we finished with the library at the end of our main function, we use img quit to free the memory. Now that SDL image is initialized, we can read an image file from the disk. SDL image puts the image data in an SDL surface data structure which resides in our main memory. For efficiency, we usually want to keep the image data in the memory of our video card. Once the image is loaded, we can copy it to the video memory with the SDL create texture from surface function and keep a pointer to this data in a SDL texture. We use SDL3 surface to remove the image data from the main memory. We release SDL texture data from the video memory with the SDL destroy texture function. Before rendering the texture, we need to define where in the window coordinates we want the texture to be placed. For this we use, like in our SDL2 drawing tutorial, a SDL rect structure that defines the top left corner, the width and height of the region where you want to draw the texture. For this example, we'll use a rectangle of 250 by 250 pixels with the origin at point 00. In order to actually draw the texture, we use the SDL render copy function that takes as arguments the renderer, the texture, an optional SDL rect that defines what part of the texture we want to use, and lastly, a SDL rect that defines where to draw the texture. Leaving the third argument of the function null, we'll use the entire texture. At this point, we need an actual image for testing purposes. You can use any JPEG or PNG file. We'll copy the image in our project folder to keep things simple. You can however use img load to read any location on your disk. Double check to be sure that you use the correct location for the image file. Before compiling the code, add the SDL2 image library to your linker target files. Let's try to build and run our code. As expected, the image was drawn in the top left corner of our window. You can draw the image at a different location simply by changing the X and Y of the destination rectangle. At this point, we can refactor the texture initialization code into a separate function for future usage.
Now we can copy the new function definition at the beginning of our file and clean up a bit the code from our main function. Using hard-coded values for the width height that matched our image aspect ratio was just a lucky guess. Normally, we'll use the actual size of our image. We can get the image width and height by using the SDL query texture function. Let's use the real width height of our image and test the code. Oops, I missed the second parameter from the initialized texture function. Now it should work. Thanks for watching and please like, share and subscribe.